Okay, we're going to look at the uh, extruder mechanism now. Uh, you will start with a uh, the extruder body and the hinge, uh, the idler uh, holder. Uh, usually, if this is a Wade's extruder, uh, it actually prints with a little support thing right here. You just snap that off, uh, leaving it look like that right there. Uh, it also has a lot uh, uh, some bridging here. You need to, uh, you know, use a a drill uh, of the appropriate size to clear all that out um, in all those places. Uh, the eight millimeter there, and the three millimeter there, and the either three millimeter or uh, number six screw holes there. Um, then you want to. I've got this one completed. Get your 608 bearing, get a little 12 millimeter long piece of uh, uh, M8 rod or 516 rod or threaded rod, whichever whichever you want, it doesn't really matter, to use as an axle here. Stick it through the 608 bearing and then you can just press that down inside of there. Um, then you get, I'm using a uh, number six uh, 32 screw I think an inch long here to fit across there so that it's long enough to reach well into the far side. Um, you put a nut into there. You want to press it firmly in with a uh, with a pair of pliers. Then put it over the top of this. I can't do it with one hand here. Uh, but you notice there's a little bit of a recess there. So the, the nut doesn't fully seat down into there. It somewhat goes over the top of that. Then you uh, put your screw through there, through the nut, and then it just extends out farther than that and just becomes part of the hinge pin. Uh, that way you can tighten the nut right up so it doesn't walk out um, and you're not exerting any, um, any stress that would pinch the hinge shut uh, all the stresses within this little bit here. So that, that gives you this bit of it here. Then you need to put two more 608 bearings in uh, there and there. So this one here can be a bit tight. Um, it's really should be printed to be fairly tight. Um, I, I generally try to get them so that you have to use a little bit of a pressure with a pair of pliers to push this one in. This one here just slips in. Then you want to get your uh, hobbed bolt, which looks like this. Stick it through your big gear and then stick a washer on it and then put it through here and see how see how the hobbing lines up. The hobbing, which is of course this little bit here that's meant to catch the filament and push the filament along should line up uh, directly with that little hole there which is where the filament goes down towards the hot end. Uh, if it does not, if it's a little bit off one way or the other, uh, what I've found is that in any given handful of the cheap washers that I use there'll be a wide ver uh, variation, in r relatively wide variation in the uh, thickness of the washer. So I just look at the washers and stack up one or two of them and try different thicknesses and eventually I find one that uh, uh, makes the hobbing line up perfectly there. So then when you're done um, put another washer on this side. Now I've got just two nuts here. Uh, you can do this but generally I like to use a nylock nut. I just don't happen to, I'm out on nylock nuts right now, I'll go and get some at the hardware store tomorrow. Um, I just put these on as a placeholder for right now. Um, then uh, basically you need to put a, uh, there's there's places here, there's a place here for two compression spring hold, uh, screws. I really only ever use one, I use this one here. Um, uh, you can put use them both if you feel like it, but I've never found it necessary. Um, there's a captive nut in there that you need to insert. And then um, you get your long screw here. 
washer spring washer and it goes through there inserts up to there and then you know obviously you uh, will put the filament in first um, and uh, then put this through and that will and then screw it right down until the spring is almost totally compressed and that will uh, give you your bite onto your filament um, but we don't need that for right now then you need to take uh, your small gear and again there's a captive nut in there and then you put a little set screw in um, this little uh, thing here generally uh, the printed ones you really can't afford those to be loose so I generally print them tight and then drill them out um, so you, you want it you don't want to have them loose but drill them out just barely big enough so that they'll fit over the top of there it won't hurt if you have to push a little bit to get it on there um, and then uh, I have to push this all the way down in fact even that wasn't quite enough um, in order for this to mesh to this correct this is the downside to using these herringbone gears is that it has to line up exactly um, with the non herringbones you can you get plenty of slop but the herringbones are supposedly give you less uh, backlash and I guess you know if nothing else they're certainly prettier uh, I push the thing all the way down into there tighten it down I actually had to go a little farther it still wasn't quite meshing properly so I stuck some washers between the motor and uh, the body there uh, whatever you have to do to make th things line up properly and then uh, you know that's pretty much together uh, that's pretty much your uh, uh, extruder mechanism uh, just the just the top part of it the top end of the extruder uh, we'll get to more of it later